Hey guys, what's up here? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how to know what lane to gank and when. If you're new to jungling, this is one of the more intimidating subjects. Where do I go? When do I go? When should I be farming? I get asked this stuff all the time when I'm streaming, even in the comments you guys ask me this a lot. So I figured I'd break it down in this video. Keep it simple for you guys. And this kind of thing should help you all the way up to diamond. And even if you reach diamond, it will still serve as decent foundations for you to then build upon uh, and work out some more little details for yourself as you go along there. When you're jungling, it may be tempted to run around like a headless chicken. And you can do that. Sometimes it will work, but other times it really won't. So if you find yourself with inconsistencies in your play when you're doing jungle, sometimes things work, other times things really, really don't work. And you get a bit frustrated about that. And this video should help you iron out those inconsistencies a little bit so you have more of a regular game from game to game. So the three things that I want to break this down into are your lane matchups, your win conditions, and your power spikes. These are the three things you've got to take into consideration when you're thinking about where to gank. Don't worry, I'm going to break all of these down here and keep it really simple. It's not as complicated as it might sound. So let's start with your lane matchups. Basically, what this boils down to is which lane is easy for me to gank. And when you're thinking about that, you want to think about crowd control, locking people down so that you can run into them, chase them down to kill them. Damage, specifically burst damage. Do I have enough damage to kill this guy? Because obviously, if you don't have the damage, they ain't going to die. And if they don't die, then, well, woof, your gank ain't going to be too successful. Or, of course, a combination of the two. You can't just go full out on one and not have the other. And the three people involved in a gank that you're going to have to apply these rules to are yourself, your ally, and the enemy. Do I have enough crowd control to lock this guy down? Do I have enough damage to lock this guy down? Do I have a gap closer so I can jump in on someone and reach them? Does my ally have the crowd control to lock him down or the damage? And us as a unit, do we combine to something that can take down the enemy? And from the enemy's perspective, is he really hard for us to gank? Is he tanky as all heck? Is he playing full tank Malphite, stacking armor? His lane opponent, my ally, is physical damage. I'm physical damage. Is that going to work? Does he have a gap closer to jump away from me? Those are the things you've got to take into consideration when you're deciding whether or not lanes are easy to go for. But those are just the things on paper. Because on paper, things can be really great to gank or really awful to gank. But when you actually go to the game, they might change a little bit. Specifically, what I mean when I say that are things like summoner spells. If summoner spells are down, they're much e that lane becomes much easier to gank. And of course, the two other ones, which are pretty big ones here as well. Is the lane opponent poked? Like, is he low on health? And is the lane opponent pushed up really far? If the lane opponent is pushed into your tower, there's a decent chance that he's a, a lot easier to gank because he's pretty far away from safety. You've got more space to work with to make that gank happen. And if he's poked out and low on health, it's the same thing where you don't have to do as much damage to him because, you know, well, he's squishier, he's lower on health. So those are the things that happen that vary from game to game, which you can't really take into consideration in on paper, in theory. So that's how you decide what lane is easy for you to gank. And that one's, it's not complicated. You can figure that out, guys. But then you have to take into consideration the other two things here, which are your win conditions and your power spikes. Win conditions, let's move on to that one now. Win condition, the clue is in the name. If I funnel resources into this person, is this person going to facilitate our victory as a team? That's what a win condition is. So think to yourself, hmm, if I could have a 5-0 and o teammate right here, who would I want that to be? And that's the person that you want to play around the most if you think this is something you've got to take into consideration when you're deciding where you should gank. You don't want to put all your focus on a Maokai, for example. If you get your Maokai 5-0, and o, you can do that because he's got good CC, you can gank for him. But if you get him 5-0 and o, and you're camping the enemy top lane and the enemy jungler is camping your bot lane, chances are they're going to have a much nicer time of things because, well, there's a good chance the enemy AD carry will carry harder than your Maokai will. So you want to put a bit more focus on the carries in your team or people like the, the strong split pushers, something like that. However, that does not mean that you never want to gank a lane that isn't a strong win condition. I'll use that Maokai example again. A 5-9 Maokai isn't going to win you the game necessarily, but he's actually pretty easy to gank for because he has ridiculously good CC to set the gank up. So you can just swing by, Maokai can initiate the gank really simply, and normally the enemy laner is a sitting duck after that. 
So you can still gank that lane and you can get fed, but just don't sit in that lane for the whole game. Don't camp that lane. Don't think to yourself, hmm, I really need to go top now because Malkai needs a gank. Just get some free kills there, but don't spend all of your time there. That's a bad idea. Also, don't gank lanes that are losing really, really hard. Lanes that are losing hard tend to not be very strong win conditions unless you get into a really late game. For me, the way I look at it is, firstly, if I go to this lane, will I even be able to get something here? A lot of the times, it's probably just going to be a waste of time because your lane is so far behind that he's not going to be able to contribute much. Especially if he's that case where he's like under his tower on half health. Yeah, don't even bother going there. But also, even if you do get something there, is it going to change anything in this game? You're investing time and resources into helping that laner out, but then when the enemies respawn and comes back into lane, is it just going to be the same stuff all over again and your lane is still struggling? And if that's the case, then you may as well have just gone somewhere else and used your time some, someplace else. It's much better, general rule of thumb, guys, to create your own fires rather than putting effort into putting out fires from the enemy team. And bottom line, guys, if in doubt when it comes to win conditions where you should be ganking, if in doubt, just go bot lane. Just can bot lane. There's a very good chance that if your AD carry gets kills, they'll be able to carry the game. And also, especially nowadays, where supports are actually pretty bloody strong by themselves too. There's two people down there that you're getting strong. It's usually a good idea, if in doubt. So let's talk a bit about power spikes here. And this one is... is I would say it's less important than the first two. Good knowledge of power spikes is what stops you from overforcing ganks or having ganks that just don't work out for you. And this power spikes is, again, the clue is in the name. It's times when you get a quick, like, beep in power, in strength, because you've acquired something. And that something is usually a specific level or a specific item. Level six is the most obvious power spike in the game. People unlock their ultimates and suddenly they're 10 times stronger. Depending on the champion, they could be like a thousand times stronger or just like twice as strong. But either way, level six is a pretty big one. And it's something you want to play around depending, of course, where your allies playing enemy uh, yourself. You know, it's something you should be bearing in mind there. But also there are some items that are power spikes. The most obvious ones, things like Triforce or some kind of active item like a Proto Belt or something like that. If you get these items then or Void Staff or something as well can be pretty big later on. Either way. You get these power spikes and you can start playing around those laners who get those item power spikes. And generally speaking, before that point, you might not want to go to their lanes too much. This also applies to the enemy's items too. If they've got an item like a Zonias, for example, they complete their Zonias, suddenly they become a lot harder for you to gank. Or if they're just getting tanky, for example, as a tank, again, they become a lot harder for you to gank. Don't force things in lanes where they don't have their power spikes yet. And more specifically, it's a better idea for you to go to lanes that have acquired their power spikes. If you're not too familiar with item power spikes, just assume it's when they complete an item and then you should more or less be sorted. But also I should say before I end out the video as well, of course, is I haven't really touched on farming here. And that's because farming is kind of like the, the like foundation of what you want to be doing as a jungler. When you're not ganking, just farm. And it's really important that you don't overforce these ganks when like you're skipping your your jungle camps and forcing ganks if you've ignored the stuff we've talked about today if you've ignored the lane matchups the wing conditions the power spikes or you have a poor understanding of those things there's a high chance that the gank you're going for isn't going to work out and if that's the case then you're wasting so much time by skipping those jungle camps. You wanna make sure you get your jungle camps down. That's your goal, that's your experience right there. Don't forget to hold lanes as well. A little life hack there if your laner recalls or whatever like that. Pick up a few minion waves. Or if you do get a successful gank and kill the enemy laner, unless there's like 10 million enemy creeps, just give that a little shove into the tower as well. That's a little bit more XP for you too. Life hacks there as a jungle main. When I was talking about ease of ganking lanes, that also plays plays the part of, am I ganking jungler or not? If you're someone like Elise, then yeah, you you are really good at ganking. So you probably want to put a bit more focus on that ganking. But if you're someone like Pre-6, Nidli or something like that, maybe Nidli is a bad example, but someone who just wants to farm, you know, Rengar, say Pre-6 Rengar. You're, you can gank, but you don't really want to force it too much. So you can just put bit, think to yourself, maybe I don't want to go here. And then just farm and then play around your power spikes once you hit level six actually yeah i can do something now and then when your ultimate's off cooldown you can go for someone make a gank happen anyway i'm i'm hoping that that's given you a pretty good rundown of when to gank and when not to gank and just generally speaking that kind of theory you can easily get to diamond with this stuff 100 percent. and then once you reach master and plus you probably would need to 
get a bit more of in-depth knowledge, but hey, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, eh? Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe for more, and I will see you in my next video.